The following is a paid program brought to you by the Community College of Beaver County. Welcome to our special CCBC Showcase Pittsburgh, Cracking the Job Gap with Community College of Beaver County. Today we are featuring CCBC and its connection to the new technology economy and the jobs that will be available starting now and into the future. To start us off, let's start at the top. Dr. Chris Reber, president of CCBC. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you, John. A pleasure to be here. Let's start at the beginning. There's a lot of technology and a lot of trans, uh, transformation happening now in Beaver County, and CCBC is at the center of it with moving forward. H how do we start? Well, absolutely. The, uh, the, the region is in the beginning stages of economic transformation, and it, of course, uh, starts with the construction of Shell Chemicals Cracker Plant. And what that means is they are, uh, they are converting ethane gas into polyethylene, which is the principal um, ingredient for plastics products. Is this something that is hinging from the, uh, the Marcellus shale and the, the yep. gas industry, the natural gas industry that's been in uh, southwestern Pennsylvania? Absolutely. We are sitting on top of uh, arguably the largest or second largest uh, gas play in the world. And uh, technology now allows us to convert uh, ethane gas into polyethylene. The decision by Royal Dutch Shell to locate the plant in Manaka is um, absolutely life-changing. It's a six billion dollar investment or more. This was something that it started in the news and the rumors were you know five years ago, ten years ago that this cracker plant was being built and nobody fully understood the the economic impact of Beaver County and Manaka and it's literally going to turn things back to the way things were when the steel industry was booming. Well I think it, it will in one sense. Uh, it will in terms of the the, the um, size of the impact, but other than that, it's totally different. We're talking about a new world of technology, and uh, the implications in the region are phenomenal. So, for example, just to give you a couple of uh, kind of pieces of context, this is the largest industrial inve investment in Pennsylvania since at least World War II. Uh, it's estimated that the eventual impact of this plant will um, will result in as many as 10 to 15,000 jobs in all parts of the economy. The initial plant, which is just beginning to be built, will require 6,000 construction workers and about four to five years to build. And then after that, of course, we're talking about full-time family sustaining wages and e even more important, the impact of this downstream uh, will will touch every part of our lives. What is CCBC's involvement then moving forward? We, we have a lot of jobs to fill and a lot of people to educate. CCBC is the region's community college and as a community college we take the word community in our title very seriously so our mission is very specific to the needs of our community and our region and so given the fact that this cracker plant and the workforce needs associated with it are priority number one for Beaver County and the region, they're priority number one for CCBC. The workforce development implications are phenomenal, so there, there is no doubt that we are going to be seeing over time uh, an explosion of job development. The question is, will we be able to fill those jobs with local folks who have the required skill sets, uh, or will, will they well, we have to import uh, the workforce from out of state. If it's the former, we obviously benefit from the economic impact exponentially, and that's what we're committed to helping the region to train uh, these future workers. Ha throw out some of those numbers again. It, it, the construction, thousands of workers, but then full-time down the road where the technology will come into play, there will be a lot of jobs available. Yeah, so 6,000 construction workers uh, in all all parts of uh, the construction field. So we're looking at uh, highly skilled construction workers, uh, folks that uh, have come out of union apprenticeship programs or uh, other um, high skill development programs uh, in the trades and uh, things like welding and um, all parts of manufacturing and construction. So uh, those jobs will, um, will be happening over the next four to five years. When the plant opens, there will be 600 full-time employees. Now, that, that doesn't sound like a lot, 
uh, obviously 600 employees in, in any region is, is significant, but far more significant is the residual impact this plant will have as it requires other businesses to support its development uh, as the plant's operations impact everything from healthcare to uh, police protection, etc. And these are highly skilled positions highly and that's skilled. where CCBC Correct. can come in to help. Correct. Let's take a break. Uh, doctor's going to be back with us uh, throughout the show, and we're going to learn exactly how you can become involved and get those skill sets to start a new career. If you'd like to know more about CCBC and its new industry programs, log on to the website ccbc.edu.industry or call them 724-480-3450 and find out what kinds of programs and jobs will be available now and in the future. Coming up next, we'll talk to CCBC Dean Goberish, who is here to talk about industry partners, building the consortium, and training for the future workplace for a lot of jobs. That's on the way next. Welcome back to our special showcase Pittsburgh, cracking the job gap with Community College of Beaver County. With me now is CCBC Dean Goberish, who is here to talk about scaling up for Shell. Hi, John. Hi, John. Good, good to be here. Uh, where do we start? This is all relatively new for everybody, not only at CCBC, but in the, uh, the area. How do, we, how do we start? Well, first of all, um, it, it's, it's a really exciting time. I'm I've lived here my entire life, I'm 50 years old, and I, I was here when the steel mills were at their height, and uh, I was a job search counselor when the steel mills closed. So the, this opportunity is great, and we're really trying to get ahead of it. In uh, 2013, um, shortly after Shell made the announcement, we weren't sure if they were going to actually build the ethane cracker plant in Manaka. So, but what we did is looked into some training that they may be interested in, and we visited with companies like Nova, BASF, First Energy, Westinghouse, and we found out that there was great interest in a process technology program. So with that, we began applying for a National Science Foundation grant to begin that program. And we visited four colleges in the Houston area. Um, these colleges have been at it for probably 30 years. So we visited their faculty. They shared their curriculum. We met their students. We got to visit companies like Exxon, Shell, uh, and Marathon. And we brought all that knowledge back to, to Western PA and in 2014, we had an advisory board tweak the curriculum and uh, personalize it to, to, for industry in our region. And uh, we began offering process technology program in 2015. So these are operators that are going to, to run the plant, monitor operations, ensure safe and efficient operations. So we are about a year and a half ahead of Shell's announcement. So that's the first bucket that Shell's looking for is process operators. Probably, um, I'm thinking maybe 250 individuals will be hired as operators at that plant. We don't have exact numbers just yet. The second bucket is engineers, which we have a pre-engineering program. And the third is maintenance, and we've expanded our maintenance programs, electrical, mechanical maintenance, welding, um, HVAC, and the like. So this is something that it's going to encompass it's so many different careers and availability for different backgrounds and different training for men and women. Absolutely. In fact, we, we work closely with Shell. Uh, to date, Shell's given us $70,000 for scholarships, and there's definitely an emphasis on women and minority candidates. They want to ensure diversity. Um, and also, Shell has provided um, about ninety thousand dollars in in funds for equipment which we we've, we've used for our program when you went to other cities what you mentioned specifically houston right. operations like this cracker plant that we will be seeing are up and running and have been for many years in, in other markets oh, or is this I, new this is new to our region right. but but in in the in, in the gulf coast region uh, no it's not new okay. you, you've seen that we've seen that industry develop over decades right in fact it was kind of a glimpse into the future for us so we were we were able to take back all that knowledge, and we have those resources to, to connect as we continue to expand our program. Are we looking to educate uh, you know, younger people right now who m might be coming up into high school and considering college? Or are we looking for somebody who maybe wants to start a new career who is an adult for continuing education? Re really, both. Uh, in Beaver County, we have um, various organ community organizations, economic development, workforce organizations, uh, the school districts, higher ed, we've all partnered in what we call the Energy and Advanced Manufacturing Partnership. And we're starting 
with middle school to get that word out to students. Uh, we have them on campus several, several times a year. We'll have up to 500 middle school students on campus. And then we'll also have parents and those students in the evening to get the word out. But we also target dislocated workers and individuals who are perhaps wanting to make a career change. So our students range anywhere from 18 to probably uh, early 50s. So it, anybody. Program. So this really, could be something. Absolutely. Th this is really going to change the greater Pittsburgh area. It is, and, and these are not the, the old, dirty mill jobs. Nothing, not that there's anything wrong with right. that, but I think that's the perception. People uh, are, are not pursuing those type of opportunities. But if you look at the cracker plant, this is going to be a state-of-the-art facility. Most manufacturing facilities now are automated. They're, they're clean. They're very safe environments. Um, I would encourage anyone to look into the opportunities uh, available um, in, in manufacturing, advanced, advanced manufacturing and, and energy. And most of these degrees through CCBC, are they two-year degrees or are they longer or shorter? They're mostly associate degree. And we also okay. have, we also have uh, fast track certificate programs. For example, we have um, a apprenticeship readiness program that's preparing individuals for the 6,000 construction jobs that are gonna be needed during uh, the, the construction phase of the cracker plant. Thank you, John. We're out of time, oh. but uh, it, it seems like the future in Beaver County is going to be great for the uh, for the next generation or two. We're excited, and we're really uh, and you're on trying the ground, to get, a, ground get ahead of the, the game here. If you'd like to know more about CCBC and the future workforce programs, log on to ccbc.edu slash industry or give Dean Gobrish a call, 724-480-3450. Coming up next, we'll talk to the Shell plant manager about CCBC's industry partnership and the building of the workforce of the future. That's on the way next. Welcome back to our special showcase Pittsburgh, Cracking the Job Gap with Community College of Beaver County. With me now is the Shell plant manager, Jeff Craftvie, who has developed a special working relationship with CCBC. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Oh, thank you. And welcome to Pittsburgh. You, you have uh, relocated here. Relocated to Aliquippa, and which is about eight miles away from the site. And it's been fantastic. Well, let's start at the beginning in case somebody, we, we've heard the, the phrase cracker plant. We've heard Shell cracker plant. Right. What, what is that and, and how far along are we and when will it be completed? Yeah, what it essentially does is take the natural resources around here, ethane that's in the natural gas, separates it and cracks it. And then in turn is made into polyethylene, which is in, in just about every product you go. Go through Walmart and see a lot of the films and blow molding your detergent bottles so on. So it's eventually cracked and turned into a, uh, a plastic, which is used in just about everything. How far along is the plant currently right now? The plant is pretty much completing its civil work, which is the underground yeah. work. We've done a lot of mitigation of a former legacy site. And right now we're working uh, to pour foundations this year. Steel erection should begin next year. Okay, and this is something where it's not going to be done in six weeks. This is no. a multi-year. This is a multi-year, and, and as we talked earlier, the first thing we'll commission is our cogeneration and utility system so we can provide steam and power. CCBC uh, has been a, a partner with the Shell. How did that form, and, and why did you turn to, uh, to them? Yeah, in a word, CCBC. BC has been vital for us. I mean, essentially, they've been, they are a hub, an educational hub in the county, and they provide local people for the talent pipeline that we need to operate and maintain the facility. So they have been uh, out in front, developed a curriculum. We've helped with that. And then uh, uh, we've helped uh, with scholarships for some of the local people and a one-to-one -one relationship with those people because we are dependent on that talent eventually operating site. And this is something too where this is a, a, a new type of industry for the area so it's not like you can just show up and start working. You have to be trained specifically. It, it really is. There's obviously a manufacturing legacy here that's strong to, a foundation to draw from. Uh, but it's a different technology now and it's a very advanced technical type of positions and it requires a different level of education for you to be qualified to do it. You're looking for three different workforce profiles, different priorities at Shells. What, what are those? Yeah, uh, well, those are going to be those who operate our site, those who maintain it, and some of the staff that do the analytical work. 
Um, and so when we talk about process technology, a lot of our laboratory technicians and our process operators will come out of that program. Uh, you also see a strong trades here and apprenticeship programs will eventually go into our maintenance staff. Engineers can come from anywhere, just about, but uh, they can come out of the local Pitt, Carnegie Mellon, so on, and Penn State, and be able to, to again, do the analytical work that's required. But it's something where you've partnered with CCBC to gear them specifically to work in this one facility. Yeah. Well, and the, well, what they are doing also is branching out. We, you know, we're one piece of the manufacturing pie here, and okay. there's. Uh, in turn, there are other manufacturers located close to us. I think they have a 40-group advisory board of which we're a part of. Uh, obviously, though, we're the, the latest addition to Beaver County. Uh, we're going to be drawing. There's going to be a lot of demand from us uh, in terms of uh, people. So I, I think we've been help, ha able to help catalyze, buy some equipment, uh, and help set the curriculum up. The man and woman power, thousands of people will be needed to build and maintain and manufacture this facility. Well, yeah, there's, it ramps up, you know, from the construction standpoint, and as construction ramps down, we ramp up in terms of those who will operate it. Uh, and, and, you know, the regional potential is large. And we're probably not the only ones that are going to be here. So it, it should be a good growth story. And this is something with your background. You told me you had uh, plenty of experience with a similar facility in other parts of the country. Right. Is this turning out to be a lot bigger than people anticipated in Beaver County? I think it's massive. Yeah. I think it's generational. I think, you know, again, in my background in manufacturing throughout the United States, uh, this this is cutting edge, leading edge. This is a world scale, world class facility and really does set a different pathway forward in this region. It's going to be big. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. If you'd like to know more about Shell's relationship with CCBC, log on to ccbc.edu slash industry or call 724-480-3450. Stick around. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to our special showcase Pittsburgh, Cracking the Job Gap with Community College of Beaver County. With me now, CCBC's Bob Boyd. Welcome to the show, Bob. Thank you. Nice to be here. Bob, you are an instructor, process technology. Yes. That's a term that's going to be big, but a lot of us probably have no idea what it means. Yeah. What is it? Well, process technology talks about uh, the fact that all manufacturing facilities take in uh, raw materials, one or two or more, and the product is a product, one or two or more. And that black box between the raw material and the products is what we call process technology. And uh, what we do in the curriculum is we talk about the equipment that makes that happen. Uh, we talk about uh, the controls of these processes and the systems. Uh, we have instrumentation courses that teach the students how the systems are controlled and uh, also HSE is always big in every course that we teach, which means health, safety, and environmental. So we want to operate these systems safely. We want to operate them uh, in regards to employee health and community health, and also to protecting the environment. Is this something that's relatively new for CCBC, this type of education and these type of classes? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, it uh, developed with the uh, cracker plant uh, from Shell coming here to Manaka, and uh, so it's it's a relatively new new curriculum. And this is something you have worked in the industry uh, yes. for many many years. So yes. this is not something that's new to you. No, absolutely. So you'll be able to teach and educate moving forward. Yes, I uh, recently retired with 42 years of design engineering experience, designing industrial facilities, and uh, I thought this might be a uh, good segue. Right. To not, Perfect timing. Not, not put the brain on the shelf and. Uh, uh, share a little bit of my experience and knowledge with uh, some up and coming. Who would be suitable for process technology? Where do we start? Uh, the ideal student in my mind would be uh, someone who is technically oriented, but also someone who uh, would like to be hands on, to be out in the field and see the things, be in the control rooms, and actually um, uh, operating and making the decisions on how to make the products. 
uh, more economically, efficiently, safely, things like that. What kind of jobs can come out of process technology? Uh, our main focus, I believe, is uh, operations, but also can be uh, uh, maintenance and also and go into and, and it's kind of interesting in the industry once you get into a facility and you work as an operator there's no ceiling you know uh, just impress your bosses and keep improving and learning and plant management might be in your future or some kind of a uh, part of a plant management or something like that so real real bright careers now the students will go out and, and tour different plants in different communities is that correct correct yeah we uh, I'm teaching the equipment course right now and we go out to uh, a company called Mark West in Evans City and it's kind of interesting because we do the the theory in the class on for instance pumps uh, I teach a class on pumps and then the on a Tuesday and on Thursday we go out to Mark West and they introduce us to their plant and what they do. We go down to their control room, look at the HMI screens, which is human machine interface. And uh, it's kind of interesting, the first time uh, the students saw the HMI screens, we walked in the control room and there was like 20 TV screens with operators sitting around looking. I could just read their minds, but a real video game. Right, exactly. You know, so, and uh, they really got a charge out of that. And then after that, we went and walked out into the field and actually saw some pumps operating. I uh, had one of the operators there tell us what kind of problems they have, maintenance issues, mm -hmm. and uh, then we were actually able to go into their little warehouse and see all kinds of different pumps that are there. So it's really uh, the hands-on part of the uh, program. So it's not just all classroom, it's, it's out Absolutely. It's literally yes. learning the industry yes. and yes. seeing people who are doing it. Right. Uh, are they meeting companies that might hire them someday? Are the students meeting with people already? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, uh, one of the big questions at Mark West was, how do I apply? Right. <laughs> but uh, we've, uh, we toured the Center Township Water Authority uh, last week. Okay. and uh, talked about opportunities there. So absolutely, that's uh, one, of the, one of our main focuses to get the, get the kids educated and then get them out into the real world with their feet on the ground. What advice do you have for anybody who might be interested, uh, who's watching, or a parent uh, who has a high school student or somebody who wants to continue their education? Uh, come over and talk to us and <laughs> give us a call. And uh, I, I think we have a great program that is a fit for uh, a lot of kids that are out there today. Perfect. Thank you, Bob. If you'd like to know more about CCBC's industry partnership, log on to ccbc.edu slash industry or call them at 724-480-3450. Coming up next, Dr. Jody Eldridge. She's a student at CCBC about the experiences gained by attending CCBC. That's coming up next. Welcome back to our special showcase Pittsburgh, Cracking the Job Gap with Community College of Beaver County. Joining me now is a student at CCBC, Jody Eldridge. Welcome to the show, Jody. Thank you. Jody, you have worked in the oil and gas industry for years and you decided mm -hmm. to go back to continue your education. What did you do and why did you go back? Well, I'm currently in the upstream portion of oil and gas industry, which is the drilling, pre-fracking, -frac mm -hmm. pre-pipeline. And I love the oil and gas industry. It's an exciting industry. It's um, growing in Pennsylvania. It's mm -hmm. affording so many opportunities, but the opportunity with Shell and CCBC would afford me an education in the downstream, which okay. is the end product. So this is something that I think we've learned through the show that to work for uh, to Shell and the new Cracker facility, you can't just apply, you have to have specialized training, so you're right. planning ahead. I am. I first learned about the program at an industry event where a Shell employee spoke, and he talked about the partnership with CCBC and the availability of a scholarship and wanting to ensure that they had enough educated trained employees prior to the opening of the plant. Is it something where you have the advantage maybe because you have worked in the industry for a couple of years? Or would, is it totally different and you're learning something yeah, totally new? It is totally different. Upstream okay. is the drilling side, then you have midstream which is pipeline and downstream would be the cracker plant where you take the raw material okay. and convert that into an end product. So it's totally different, which makes it exciting because I'll have an overall 
um, knowledge right. of the business. You are majoring in process technology. I am. We've heard that phrase quite a few times during the show. What is process technology? What, is, what, what are you studying specifically? Well, right now I'm in my second semester, so we are studying the instrumentation and the equipment that goes along with taking that process variable, whether it's oil, whether it's natural gas, and how you process that to come up with your intermediate product, which will be made into something else, or a product that we can sell retail to the consumer. So you have to know the technology and the equipment behind that in order okay. To monitor that. Before this all started, did you think, oh, I've done this for a couple of years, I think I'll know some of the things, but then now all of a sudden you're in it and you're like, I'm learning something new every single every day. day. Every day. I did have that attitude a little bit and I was really surprised at how technical the classes are. So I feel that they're preparing me right. for an eventual job with Shell. We've talked to some of the educators here on the show and these were men and women who've worked in the industry mm -hmm. who are teaching. It's mm -hmm. not like they're learning this as they go. They worked in the industry as you have. Is it something that you would recommend this to your friends and relatives that this is going to be something really big for the future of the area? That's what I like. Part of what I like about this whole the whole curriculum is that the instructors are coming in with decades of experience in right. oil and gas and they know what they're teaching so and that not only that they care about the fact that we not only learn it but we can apply it and we understand it that that small atmosphere of open discussion I definitely recommend it to my friends and family. Uh, are you learning too that this cracker plant, the Shell Cracker facility in Beaver County is going to be a lot bigger than anybody anticipated? Oh, it's bigger than I anticipated. Right. And not just for Shell, but for all of the greater Pittsburgh region right. and the jobs that it'll bring in. Uh, what do you plan on specifically doing after graduation? Well, my is hope- Is there a specific yeah, job? Well, my hope is that I will be hired as a pro process technician, okay. but also as a recruiter for women into the industry. I think that there's a misconception that oil and gas is a man's world. And women are so welcome and wanted in this industry. So I'm hoping that I can be that voice or that role model for other women to come into the industry. Have you felt that you are a minority as a woman in the oil and gas industry so far? Well, it's a fact that yeah. overall, whether it's upstream, midstream, or downstream, women yeah. are a minority in oil and gas. Okay. And the producers recognize that and they want to hire more women. So there are plenty of career opportunities. Plenty. And a great place to get an education. Thank you, Jody, and good luck to you, Thank too. Thank you. Uh, if you'd like to know more about the experience at CCBC, log on to ccbc.edu slash industry or call 724-480-3450. Coming up next, we'll speak with Dean Joyce Sorelli about CCBC Career Pathways and the STEM High School Academy. That's on the way next. Welcome back to our special showcase Pittsburgh, Cracking the Job Gap with Community College of Beaver County. Joining me now, Dean Joyce Sorelli. Hi, Dean Joyce. Hi. <laughs> so let's uh, start. You have a, a dual enrollment program and a lot of different majors. What is a dual enrollment program? Uh, well, dual enrollment programs are is a program at a college that would afford a high school student to start gaining credits towards their college degree. There's several ways that you can do a dual enrollment program. You can be a full-time high school student and take courses um, in the evenings uh, to be dual enrollment or online courses. Um, you can also be a college and high school student, which is also dual enrollment, but you actually take those courses at your high school. At CCBC, we offer a very unique opportunity with our high school academies. And what that is, is that affords the high school student to be able to come to the college for a portion of their day, along with being a high school student for a portion of their day. So what we do is we work with partnering high schools, and they actually, many of them provide transportation transportation for their high school students to get to our college and actually participate as a college student um, and then they um 
they take the courses and they gain college credits. Uh, for our program in particular, um, high school students beginning as a junior in high school, they can get up to 28 college credits by the time they graduate high school. So that's equivalent to one year of college. So uh, to get a, a, an entire degree, an associate's degree, it's two years. So yes. you can have half of that finished yes. by the time you start college. Yes, which is absolutely right. amazing. Um, so the other thing that we offer for students is uh, we are one of the only schools in Pennsylvania, actually the only school in Pennsylvania, that um, affords our students to utilize Pell Grant opportunities. So any students that are on free or reduced lunch uh, virtually can come and attend this program free of cost. And does this program exist for specific high schools in the area or a lot of different high schools? Um, many high schools. Okay. Um, for aviation and health, um, along with STEM, um, it's the 14 schools um, in Beaver County community okay. area. But aviation, we span many counties. Um, we do Lawrence, Allegheny, uh, Beaver, and Butler. We've actually just signed agreements with Butler and Mars, so students from there are actually attending our aviation academy. Uh, I want to get to the Aviation Academy, but you mentioned a STEM school. What is yes. STEM? It, it's an acronym. Yes. STEM is rather an enigma for many people. They really don't understand what STEM is. It's science, technology, engineering, and math. So specifically for our STEM Academy, we offer two tracks. We offer process technology as well as engineering. The process technology piece links directly with Shell um, and process technicians. So this would be people that would be working in the plants troubleshooting. People, a lot of folks don't understand that in order to work for Shell um, in our area, um, it's, you're not able to just go in and apply for a job. You have to be trained. So we are very fortunate that Shell has selected us to partner with them um, to do the training uh, for these jobs. It sounds like a lot of what Shell and the Cracker Plant in the industry and uh, the community college, you've joined forces to train students to immediately graduate and start working. We have. With some high paying jobs. Um, well, for example, um, the median range for any student that would be graduating from process tech going into uh, sorts of process technology jobs, it's about $77,000 per year. Um, if you look at our other academies as well, you have nursing students that are graduating uh, from our academy and our program that would literally walk into the door of, for example, Heritage Valley Health System making $55,000. $5,000 a year, um, along with the professional piloting. Um students can make up to $150,000 to start for uh, both ProPilot and air traffic control. Our air traffic control program is number one in the nation. Um, there is a huge silver tsunami that's overtaking um, the United States based on the baby boomers exiting jobs. So at CCBC, what we've done is we've taken our very high profile programs and the programs that we're very strong in, and we've built pathways for students beginning in our academies so they can follow not only um, high school um, to college uh, but also we have articulation agreements so they can move forward into bachelor's and master's degrees and even get higher paying jobs. Thank you Dean. To know more about CCBC's Career Pathways and STEM High School Academy log on to ccbc.edu slash industry or call 724-480-3450. Coming up next we'll talk to Dr. Roger Davis about about CCBC and the Tri-State Consortium that's on the way. Welcome back to our special showcase Pittsburgh, Cracking the Job Gap with Community College of Beaver County. With me now is Dr. Roger Davis, who will tell us about the Tri-State Consortium, which includes CCBC. Yes. Hello, doctor. Hello, thank you. What is the consortium? Well, I wanna, I'm excited because in 2016, the college was asked to step in and author a grant, uh, the Department of Labor grant called America's Promise. And so in three weeks, we authored this grant. It was a $6 million grant. It included Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia. It included 40 industry partners, and we got it done. And then at the end, we didn't receive the grant. But the momentum that was created because of that, we said, let's keep going. 
And so recently, the Benedum Foundation funded us to create this tri-state consortium, which, can, which consists of Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, Stark State Community College, Pierpont Community College, and CCBC. We're taking the lead on the consortium. So what, a little bit deeper then, what happens in this consortium? What, what, what is the advantage of this, and how can it be an advantage to your students? Well, I, I call it uh, EFE. That's, what I, that's how I remember it. First of all, it's for education. The Cracker plant, uh, which is a $6 billion plant that's two miles from our campus, we believe that the shale that's under the ground, it's large enough to have four or five more plants in the area. And so we want students, whether they live in West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, if they live with us and they say they work, they come to our institution, we want them, if they want to get up and move to West Virginia, to be able to port their degrees, their, their credits, and anything that they want to do to another institution without losing any momentum. That's one. Secondly, we want to get, we want to combine the three organizations and the three states for funding, whether it's local funding, state funding, national funding, or federal funding. We believe a large consortium has power. It has, it has one voice. It has one agenda. It can speak with cogent uh, urgency. And I think it can le get lenders, whether it's funders or foundations, to fund us to move education and the ec economy forward. And I think lastly is for employment. Of course, we want to do best practices, but we want our industry partners to tell us first when they need employment, their employment opportunities. And so that's what's exciting about the Tri-State Consortium. So this is going to expand bigger than just Beaver County with the availability in the future of possibly more plants throughout the Ohio Valley area. Yeah, it's a 27, we, we wrote the grant on a 27 county region. There are seven counties in West Virginia, nine counties in Ohio, and 11 counties in Pennsylvania. And that 27 county region, it probably consists of five to six community colleges and probably I think ten to a dozen four-year institutions okay. along with industries. I believe one of the strategies I believe is that every state should have their industries in the center beginning a conversation on what are their needs and what are their wants. What do they need from not just educational providers but workforce and investment boards and other uh, auxiliary organizations. What do they need and then we can come to supply those needs. When the three states complete those discussions I think we then, as a consortium, can have a national convening of those three states to really begin to build one agenda. Is it common for schools to build a network like this consortium to join together with a common goal of, you know, working together to get students I in the right place? I don't think so. I think CCBC is very unique. Right. Uh, I, I mean, it sounds like a great idea. I always say we're a small school. We're doing big things. Right. We, one of our mantras is that we believe in partnerships. We are the second smallest community college in the state of Pennsylvania. And so we're not always looking to compete, but we're looking to partner with organizations that can make us stronger and that can leverage our strengths so we can move forward. I would think that was key. What I remember what I transferred colleges and lost a lot of credits years That's ago. Right. So if you can get organized on what I took here, we'll transfer transfer here, to me that makes all the sense in the world. That's right. You know, the federal government is not happy about paying for English 101 in one state and then paying for English 101 again in another state and paying for it over and over and over again. And so higher education has to be smarter in how they do business. We want our students to graduate faster um, and we have retention problems across the nation and so I think CCBC is taking the lead in this organization to really impact and improve the quality of student life. Do you think students, uh, the population uh, at the college will be increasing over the next couple of years specifically because of this plant? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think we're going to see not just the 6,000 employees come in, but you're going to see the region change because it's not, it's, it's Beaver, but then it's also, it's going to be the other states that are going to begin to build the cracker plants that we hope that will place. And so there's going to be a swell, right? There's a, there's a swell that's coming. And so are we ready? We want to be ready. And it'll be multi-generational down the that's road right. too. Thank you, doctor. If you'd like to know more about the Tri-State Consortium, log on to ccbc.edu slash industry or call 724-480-3450. Stick around. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to our special showcase Pittsburgh, cracking the job gap with Community College of Beaver County. 
with me is Colton Codner. Colton, you are fairly new to the area, That's to correct, the, uh, the Community College of Beaver County. So many things going on. What is your title? What do you do? And where do we start? Absolutely. It is incredibly exciting. And my title is the Executive Director of Advancement and Sponsor Programs. And I've only been at the college about, about two months. And you know, as I was joining the college, I was so excited to see the, you know, the things happening in Beaver County and really broadly throughout Western Pennsylvania and the critical role that the community college is playing driving the, the success of those initiatives from the education standpoint. It seems like from what I've learned so far today that Community College of Beaver County is kind of the center of what's going on with education and training for the future of the the area with with mm -hmm. what's happening with the uh, with the, the cracker plant and other sure. potential jobs down the road. Yeah. What is the Shell Scholarship Donation Program? They are big partners with, uh, obviously, the Cracker Plant sure. and uh, with uh, the college. Yeah, Shell's been a fantastic partner for the college. I mean, it's, it's not often you have a chance of a, you know, a multi-billion dollar facility down the road, and they've really invested in the college to support the education infrastructure to make that facility and the other larger petrochemical industry in the region successful. Uh, they have very generously supported the college with a, a $90,000 commitment to purchase some new equipment and some new simulation equipment for our hands-on learning lab, as well as you know, close to $60,000 of scholarship support for students in our process technology program to ensure that there's not a financial barrier that prohibits a student from pursuing this viable career path. And I would assume that's something where to learn how to operate the equipment and machinery and the plant, you have to be able to be hands-on while you're learning to do it. So that, that's one of the key elements. Absolutely. That's really the thing. Uh, manufacturing is much different than it was when, uh, when we were growing up. You step into a manufacturing facility today and it's you know, state-of-the-art equipment and you have to be able to interact with complex uh, mechatronics and advanced uh, manufacturing technology and without that hands-on experience you know, there's no way a student can step into that environment without. without How does this training. relationship benefit CCBC? Well, it's, it's just a fantastic opportunity for us to make sure that we're developing programs and educational offerings that are industry-centered and industry-approved. Uh, and it really makes sure that our students are set up on a pathway, you know, whether that's a high school student that's starting to explore their career path or a, a student that's uh, enrolled at uh, CCBC full time and really moving down that path uh, with a partner like Shell or other petrochemical industry. Well, that was my next question. Mm -hmm. I know that Shell has uh, been on board because of uh, the name and we know what's going on with the plant, mm -hmm. but a lot of other companies in the area have also participated and made donations. Absolutely. So, you know, I've been incredibly impressed as I joined the college and had a chance to see the Industrial Advisory Board our Process Technology Program has. It's close to 40 organizations that are actively engaged in that advisory board, helping shape the curriculum and the, the educational experience our students have. You know, we've had generous support from Nova Chemicals. They've provided a $60,000 commitment for scholarships. We've had individuals in the community step up with a you know, $100,000 commitment uh, to also support uh, equipment purchases for the, for the program as well. Are you surprised at the depth and size of this whole expansion and growth in Beaver County? You know, it's, it's a very exciting thing, and I think that's something that you know, may be misconstrued a little bit uh, sometimes. You know, Shell did a fantastic job of really shining the light on the opportunity that Petrochemical provided here in the region, and it's really helped focus the college around this idea of advanced manufacturing and how do we work collaboratively with Shell as well as you know, the rest of that 40 uh, organization board to make sure that we're meeting the needs of the broader in industry. What is the Lincoln Learning donation? This was a big mm -hmm. one. Absolutely. So that's the, the largest gift in the history of the college. It was a $1.5 million uh, commitment from Lincoln Learning Solutions and really supports our, our high school academies, which are uh, a nationally distinctive model that allows students as a junior in high school to enroll at CCBC and complete one year of their associate's degree. Uh, we launched that around our signature aviation program, which is you know, nationally recognized for success in air traffic control as well as our professional pilot program. Uh, then we rolled out our Health Sciences Academy, which allows students to, to come in and, and prepare to care so that they can go seamlessly into the Health Academy uh, needs of tomorrow. And then the uh, next piece of that rolling out is our STEM Academy, focused around you know, needs in engineering and process technology. Are people aware of the growth that is happening at uh, the Community College of Beaver County? To me, uh, my children both graduated high school recently, mm -hmm. and I know some of their friends went there for the, uh, for the pilot training program. Sure. All of a sudden, it seems like this school is a community college, but it's really being front and center and on the map now. And I think that's something that's reflective of so many community colleges. You know, at a community college, you can be very flexible and responsive to the needs of industry. And industry is seeing that and responding to that as well. You know, they understand the value of partnering with folks like 
uh, the Community College of Beaver County because we can develop the curriculum that is targeted for, for their specific workforce needs. So I think the industry or the region's quickly learning about the great work we're doing and I'm looking forward to helping share that broadly throughout you know, the Western Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh area. We've learned a lot. Thank you, Colton. If you'd like to know more, log on to ccbc.edu slash industry or call 724-480-3450. Coming up next, Dr. Chris Reber will be back to give us some final thoughts about CCBC's industry partnerships and building the future workforce. Welcome back to our special showcase Pittsburgh, cracking the job gap with Community College of Beaver County. Back with us and some final thoughts, Dr. Christopher Reber, president of CCBC. Doc, we've learned a lot in the past hour and the technology in the future in southwestern Pennsylvania, specifically Beaver County, is going to change forever. Yes. What are your final thoughts as we well, wrap up? I, we've approached this once in a lifetime or once in several lifetimes opportunity uh, with a view to partnerships. The reality is the opportunities for our region are phenomenal, but in order to be prepared and really realize the potential for the region, we have to all be on board. Uh, and so CCBC has positioned itself to be the partnership college. Uh, we are, we aspire to be a high achieving, comprehensive public community college that offers a personal atmosphere for students. We view ourselves as a citizen of the larger educational community. So unlike the traditional model of viewing other uh, colleges as competitors, we view them as partners. And what we're attempting to do is work with all parts of the educational community, K through 12, four year and graduate institutions, to come together to create a seamless pathway of credentials that can start in middle school with awareness programs to, to help kids know what career opportunities are emerging and available to them, giving students also in high school the opportunity to finish high school with a year of a CCBC degree completed, offering the programs that are relevant and needed to realize the opportunities of this region, and then creating seamless pathways for students who want to go on and earn a, a bachelor's degree so that all of the credits that they might have started in high school, finished at CCB, will, C, will transfer into other institutions. And so we've now come together with area uh, four-year colleges, Geneva College, Penn State, Beaver, Robert Morris University, for example. We've created over 100 articulation agreements that allow the seamless um, transfer of credit between the institutions. And we now have over 600 of those agreements nationwide. So we're on the cusp of coming together and working with others to create a whole new model for education that is focused on workforce development, such as the need that uh, the petrochemicals industry is going to have now and in the future. Uh, but learning to do things with others that uh, result in outcomes that are greater than some of their parts. Has this happened in other communities and other cities or are we on the cutting edge of how you're joining and planning from maybe middle school through high school to other universities and colleges? Uh, there are certainly lots of examples of pieces of this throughout the country. I will tell you that our approach has gained us national recognition. We were named, for example, by the Aspen Institute as one of the top 150 community colleges of the 1300 nationwide because of the success that we're having right. partnering with others and focused on student success. I think our unique opportunity has to do with the transformational change happening and the, uh, the community uh, support and integration of what all of us are doing. We're all on the same ship and we believe it's rising. This will change Beaver County for many generations to come. And are we seeing that this cracker plant in this industry, is this just the beginning of more expansion? Thank you, absolutely. So uh, the reality is because of uh, where we're located in this whole region, there are likely to be four or five, maybe even six cracker plants in the tri-state region uh, happening over the next, let's say five to 10 years. The impact of those for the region is now phenomenal. So there's a lot of speculation that PPT is going to be announcing a new cracker, similar scope in uh, Belmont, Ohio, maybe as early as the end of this year. There is then speculation there will be another one in uh, West Virginia. And so we have a unique opportunity because Shell was first and CCBC started working on this four or five years ago. Uh, we now have the programs that are specifically tailored to the industry. We're aspiring uh, at CCBC to become the tri-state leader 
for uh, petrochemicals workforce development and all the residual impact. And we, in fact, were fortunate recently to receive a uh, grant from the uh, Claude Worthington Benedum Foundation to create a tri-state consortium that will include two and four-year colleges, economic development folks, manufacturers, and others. So we're going to try to have a common tri-state regional approach all together. to the need so that we can all learn from one another, from best practices, work together. And we think that's the way that the region will benefit to the fullest extent possible. Doctor, we have about 30 seconds left. Your final thoughts on the CCBC and the future of the Cracker Plan in Beaver County? Well, I would just say I've been in uh, higher education for my entire career, and that's more years than I'm going to tell you at this point. Uh, but uh, I have never felt more satisfied and more honored than I do to be in Beaver County at CCBC at this moment in our history. We are on. Uh, we are entering into such tremendous opportunity and working at a community college is so vital and so meaningful because we see li lives changing and being transformed as a result of the work that we're doing. Great things are in the future for CCBC, you and uh, Beaver County. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, John. If you'd like to know more, get your education ready. ccbc.edu slash industry or 724-480-3450. Find out how CCBC can help you join the workforce of the future. That does it for today's show. I'm John Klein, and I'll see you on the next Showcase Pittsburgh. The preceding has been a paid program brought to you by the Community College of Beaver County.